the plan. We want to discuss a variety of topics. It will be cricket and more cricket, obviously, but it will be also be on and off the field. We want to draw expertise within our own fold. We have 1,600 members, 1,600 of you who can contribute to these shows and make it, you know, take the show to the general public too and make them aware of our strengths. Uh, where can you get this kind of a platform, this kind of people who all played cricket in a tough conditions in India, prove themselves both in India and outside. So this, this is the first of many. Uh, I would, you know, it's strange circumstances I know. In fact, the last uh, show that I hosted, the audience could not see me. You know, I could see the audience. They could not see me because I was at a blind cricket program. So they were mostly blind. But look at the irony. Now I, you can see me, the audience can see us, but we can't see you. The irony of times, the pandemic situations. In any way, that's said and done. Let's get out of the show. It, it's my, you know, great pleasure in, in welcoming our eminent panelists on the show. Uh, this, it's a pleasure to have you on, gentlemen. I'll start with Anshuman Gaikwad, former Indian cricketer, a national selected to boot, the coach of Team India, uh, a successful one of that. And currently, of course, sir, he represents the ICC, uh, sorry, the B, uh, ICA at the BCC Apex Council. Welcome, Anshuman. Also present, of course, is former India cricketer, Yajuvendra Singh, and more affectionately known as Sunny. Uh, he obviously, apart from his one of the main claims, apart from his batting and energetic presence in the field, it was his world record catching. Uh, Sunny, at some point, you have to take a lesson in fielding for us. Today, of course, we'll talk about the main topic the World Test Championship. Also, on the panel, uh, absolute pleasure, Pragyan Oja, former India left arm spinner. Spin is going to obviously play a part in this. Uh, particular test and maybe in the series to follow. Uh, Pragyan, of course, also now uh, recently retired and now the representative of the ICA at the IPL Governing Council. Welcome once again, all of you. I'm sure we're here for interesting times. Welcome, Sati. Yeah. Uh, I would like to actually start off, you know, I, I think it's very relevant, uh, Anshuman, that, you know, I want you to put on your hat. You know, you've got so, so many hats the, as of a coach. This is a huge historic uh, moment, World Test Championship final. It's not something uh, never happened before, obviously, uh, which is why you know it's great that we have chosen such a day to start, start our own show. What what do you tell a, the coach? What do you tell your boys? What do you tell Virat Kohli and his boys? Like you know, I know the usual thing is treat it like any other match. Kohli has sent in his press conference, but what would you tell them? Would you be nervous yourself, Anshuman? Ah, uh, Satish. Uh... Not really. No, I don't think uh, I would be nervous. I would take this final as any other test match. Though it is, there is a big hype uh, because it's the first time that we have a test championship final. But uh, otherwise, the game remains the same. It's, it's India and New Zealand test match. Now, if the more you think about the finals and World Cup, uh, test championship, then you're putting pressure on yourself. I don't think one should even think about it. It's just like any other game and they have to go on. And the best part is that we have played against each other in a uh, number of times. So, uh, they know each other, they know each other's uh, teams, players, what they're capable of doing and it makes it that much easier. Only thing uh, is, you know, if you say, talk about me being, me being a coach, I think being in England, any team for that matter. New Zealand probably has got very similar conditions like in England. Plus, they have already played two test matches. So, they, they have, you know, got used to the condition. But that does not mean that Indians don't know what to do in England. They know very well. They have played. Most of them have played in England. They have done well. And uh, now is the time just to be a little cautious in the approach, not getting overconfident or not getting much arrogant in, uh, in the approach of the game. And I'm sure many, uh, you know, the conditions in uh, England for today's game definitely would be better than what New Zealand played against England. And as we know, what we have been talking about is the pitch. What we are uh, thinking is it does help because uh, it does help the uh, pace bowlers because of the weather. The weather changes, you know, in a day, three times. 
suddenly it gets cold, cloudy, and it rains. So, you know, all sorts of things happen. But one has to be prepared. And I'm sure I would have told my boys that be a little cautious. Don't be too arrogant in your approach. And it is basically your mindset. How you are ready to take on the challenge. Both the teams are competitive enough. And given the conditions in England, I'm sure it's time that you put on a thinking hat. And that's where you make things easier rather than just going out there and trying to play a bat around or, uh, you know, go and take it easy. Interesting. Uh, Sunny, you used the word, you know, yeah. uh, aggression, arrogance. It's difficult to tell somebody like a Virat Kohli not to be aggressive. But I want to pick your brain, Sunny, on two things yeah. that Anshuman said. One is you have played all around England. Uh, Sunny, you've gone around playing different things, UK as such. The weather always plays a big part. So I want to pick your brains on, is June the right time? We are expecting now five days of this thing. And after that also, I want you to discuss the announced playing 11. What, would this be, be in your 11? I'll come to Anshu later as a selector. But would you, this be your playing 11? Yeah. I mean, you, you, are, you, you write a lot, you keep talking about these things. So I'm sure you have your uh, firm opinions on what it should have been. See, first, uh, taking in England. Yeah, playing in England is always a challenge uh, because of the weather. Uh, and, you know, you suddenly have a cloudy day, a rainy day, and you have sunshine days also, when you can really, uh, you can bat well, and you, your conditions change drastically. Um, similarly, these, uh, that's what uh, people are going to face. And that's where, uh, you know, when you say arrogant, what uh, I think Anshu means is that you have to be very cautious as well. You know, you cannot just go there and simply say, that, oh, I've been playing this shot on when the, when the sun was on and suddenly it becomes cloudy. You have to change your technique. You have to change your approach. You have to start, to, you have to succumb and understand the conditions and then play according to those conditions. Uh, and, and that is what he means about uh, uh, the changes in the, in, in the environment. And that makes a lot of difference in, in England. You know, that's something that uh, batsmen and bowlers also have to uh, be considered. The, the other thing is about the team. I think I would have gone with the same team. I was expecting them to they play. They cover all bases, isn't it? They're yeah. talking about the weather too. They cover all bases by having this kind of a team. Yeah. And then, no, and, and the, remember, if we have, the, if we had four seamers, which is what, with, uh, what New Zealand is going to do, is uh, you, then our batting lineup, uh, you know, we get a very long tail. So you need an all-rounder. Unfortunately, Hardik Pandya is not there. Otherwise, he would have filled in that slot. But um, now you have to go along with uh, Ravindra, both the Ravis, as we, we say, because both of them are batting well as well. And, and you need that. You know, what happens, uh, a long tail, and you have early wickets, which are, if they fall, then it becomes very difficult to, for teams to put up a big score. So I think the team is is what I would have chosen anyway. Okay. Okay. Uh, are you happy with these two spinners? Would you have played two spinners in England? Against yes, I would have. If you, if you look at the history in Southampton, spinners have done well. Especially uh, Ravi and Ashwin, Ashwin has bowled well. He's picked up wickets. And uh, what we were listening and I was following the conditions over there, it was very hot. Uh, yes, the weather changes, but... If you talk about Southampton, it really helps the spinners. And uh, it's a very good choice. Uh, if you look at uh, Ravindra Jadeja, you can bat him anywhere. If you look at a modern test cricket, how they play, Ravindra Jadeja can be your uh, man who you can shuffle anywhere. He can be a floater. So I think it's a very good move. And uh, we must understand one thing, that New Zealand, uh, they depend on their fast bowlers. But Indians, they've always been comfortable with our spinners. So we have got three world-class fast bowlers. One is Ishan, then we have uh, Bumrah, and then Mohammad Shami. And we have two spinners. But if you look at New Zealand side, they don't have a spinner who can come and pick those wicket and uh, bowl those penetrative lines. So I think it's a great uh, team selection. Yeah, actually, you're right. Southampton spin has played a part because India played two tests there. Against England, of course, they lost both. And Moin Ali was a star performer. 
yeah. you know that's that's something that I had in mind. But you know, just talking a little bit more about the spin, does a spinner bowl differently in England, Prajan? Does he, you know, is there something different that he wants to do in terms of you know bringing back your pace or whatever, or what do you do in England? Yeah, uh, a little bit of experience that I had with Sare was like when you're playing there the county cricket, you don't get that kind of help uh, that you get in subcontinent. So the most important thing that you have to do is you have to you know play around with the drift. Once your ball starts drifting, and then I think you can put the batsman batsman into trouble. And uh, when you talk about the ball, it is quite similar to SG Test ball. Kokobura is different, but the seam and the feel of the ball is quite similar to SG Test. So I don't think the ball will be a challenge. But yes, the condition will be if you can use the breeze because it's an open ground. There will be a lot of breeze. So if you can use the breeze to your uh, advantage, then I think uh, you will trouble the batsman, irrespective of the turn and bounce. Yeah, I'm not quite sure they're using the Dukes or the Kukubara here yeah, because England is Dukes, but this is ICC Championship. So you're right; it could be Kukubara. Not too not sure. Duke. They're, they're using the Dukes. They're using Dukes. Oh, yeah. Not because I think yeah, in England it's so usually Dukes. Okay. But yeah. yeah. Again. Uh, Wingde has been in England often enough now to know what to do. Uh, Anshuman, this is where I come to you as a, a selector. Now, yesterday, the we know one Sunny with us right now, but the other Sunny, Sunil Gavaskar, was on air saying that he would prefer four seamers and a spinner because he's sitting in Southampton. He said, well, it's been sunny all these days. In fact, one of the hottest days there were a couple of days back. He said, the weather, the reports are such that I would go for four seamers. Can you put on your selector's hat and tell us how you do it? But there's a second point to it, Anshuman. I want to know, like, how do you go for a, a playing eleven? Do you, when you select, say, you have decided for four bowlers or five bowlers, who do you pick your five best, or are you only going on conditions? Then you pick the person. Well, Satish, to be very frank, you, being a selector or being a coach or being a captain, you know what you need to think. You always think about the opposition. What sort of opposition do, do they have? What is their strength and weaknesses? But at the same time. You don't forget your own strength. Like Pragyan rightly said, you know, the, the spinner is your strength. And not many quality spinners are there in the world cricket today. So that's an advantage that you have. And that's what you need to make most of it. Now, coming to base bowlers, you play a three pace bowler or you play four, under, unless the conditions are conducive to pace bowling, where you're going to use for at least 60 overs, 70 overs only base bowlers. Then you need four. But as you say, the condition, the wicket, uh, what uh, Prajal said, that it would ultimately assist the uh, spinners. Then this is the place where I thought the three seamers are just perfect. If three, uh, three seamers can't do the job, I don't think the fourth one will do it or the fifth one will do it. Unless you have someone like West Indies in 70s, who are bowling at 170, 160, 180, then yes, you don't need spinners. And that's why, you know, a lot of, lot of people then said that Clive Lloyd was the most successful captain. I thought he had nothing to do. He was going first slip to first slip and just giving the ball and tossing the ball over to different guys. And they were doing everything. So, coming how's back the, to... How's your left ear, you know, Anshu? Anshu, how's your left ear? Left ear, I, I'm hearing from the right one. Left is closed. <laughs> Thanks to Michael Holding. Thanks to my. Don't blame me. That's Michael. So he's my, my best friend today. You always meet up in London and have dinner whenever I go there. But uh, that's cricket. That's cricket. And I think three pace world is just right. Coming to Jadeja, Ashwin can bowl on any surface. He doesn't need only a turning track. The best part is Jadeja, what we have seen him picking wickets is, you know, he, he doesn't toss it up much. He doesn't have a big turn. But he has got that incoming and straight through. And that's where he baffles the batsman. Now, it could be any surface. And plus, if you're looking at him, like Pragyan rightly said, he can be written in any slot as a batsman. And he delivers. You've seen him uh, delivering. And feeling, who can doubt his uh, abilities? He's plus 30, 40 runs on the, on the field, plus a brilliant run-out or a brilliant catch. So, he's a utility man. You can't just think of dropping him at any cost. And you don't need to because you don't need 
more uh, pace bowler. You have got three quality bowlers. I am sure if that they can't do it, both it can't do it either. I think would would that not have been a temptation to yeah. have a, another batsman, as three pacers and one spinner? Because in England, things can happen. Would that would that have been a big temptation for the our uh, team management? Uh, I don't think so because uh, with Rishabh Pant batting so well, and he comes in at number six, I think you have enough batting strength uh, to counter anybody. More than that, I don't think you need more than those batsmen. But uh, coming to this, it's a very interesting uh, thing about the space bowlers and, and spin. Because if one of them breaks down, you know, which can happen, if one of our bowlers breaks down, then, then the issue comes in. You know, then we start, uh, and it's, uh, it's not uh, great for spin bowling. Then we start playing for a draw. <laughs> you know, that is, uh, that's the only problem uh, that could come about. And that's why I think, uh, I, I mentioned earlier, and I still think somebody like Hasik Pandya should be made uh, fit quickly. I, mean, I hope he gets fit quickly because you need somebody like that. Um, but when you come to batting, uh, yes, of course, you need the best. Uh, you need a lot of uh, batsmen out there in England because, you know, you're never set. You're never set in that condition because, like I said, the conditions change. And... Uh, you know, you can't predict yourself that I will bat in the same way and now I'm set, I've got, I'm, I'm seeing the ball well. And then suddenly you find one ball which does a little bit more than what you were expecting. So people tend to safeguard that by putting a lot of batsmen in their side. But we've got uh, both Ashwin, Ashwin has got a good uh, technique as well. So we've got two batsmen, uh, all-rounders, as you would say, spinners, all-rounders. So, I don't know. I still feel I think we've got the right combination. Uh, then what happens next is, uh, is anybody's guess. Uh, uh, but I think, no, we don't require an additional batsman. Can I add uh, something, something else? I'll, please. Yeah. You know, what Sunny said is so right. But I would like to add here that, you know, when you go into a game, especially a test match, your main batters, you have one to five. A sixth one is an all-rounder are supposed to do the job of getting runs. And the, the bowlers are supposed to do their job by getting wickets. Now, let's not mix up two things. That he can get 20, 30 runs and he can pick up two wickets. No. Don't compromise there. What I feel, the batsmen have to do their job, the bowlers have to do their job. And I think Indian team is in a very good position that number eight can go and get 100. In a test match, the Ashwin has done, Jadeja has done. Yeah. That's a blessing. I think it's a great, great uh, option that Indians have. And uh, to add to, something, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. And to add what uh, the discussion was about four bowlers and five bowlers, I think when uh, Virat Kohli took over as the captain, he made it very clear that he, any test match that he plays, he abroad, he's going to go with five bowlers. So that is his strategy. So he's sticking to his strategy. Uh, he wants five bowlers because he's very confident of, as Anshuman sir said, he's very confident of his batsmen who are going to be in the top order to deliver. I think he's very clear. So, as a captain, he knows what he's doing. What would, what should the Indian team do if they win the toss? Uh, Anshu, Sunny, Pragyan, all of you, what would your uh, call be? Well, the first uh, two days are going to be very important, Satish, which will almost decide the fate of the match. It has happened always. In any test match that you see, anybody who does well on the first two days, unless the wicket turns to be, you know, nasty later on. But otherwise, you know, first two days, almost, almost will give an advantage to either of the team. Now, looking at the pitch, we don't know how dry it is or like England, you always find little moisture in it. Initially, it has life in it. Whether you would like to know fully well that the New Zealanders have their pace attack, they're relying on the pace attack alone. Would you like to win the toss and bat first? At the same time, think the other way around that ultimately, if you feel first, you're to bat last. In case the wicket doesn't help and it turns, then you're losing that advantage of your spinners being, you know, not using that those conditions. So it's a very tricky situation, it, you know. But it's always they say it bat first 
and later on just let it go. But a lot depends on English conditions. You have to really satisfy, you know, go into detail as to what the whole thing is all about. You know, this is an argument I always have with yeah. football supporters. They say, "What only cricket? Cricket?" As when as a journalist, you go coverage for cricket. Don't give up. I told them, "Look, in football, even the toss doesn't matter. You know, you can just play any half. Cricket, it starts with the toss, which is a lucky thing. But your thinking starts from the moment the coin falls." So, Sunny Pragyan. Yeah, Satish. Uh, Satish, uh, I'll tell you. Um, Saurav Ganguly this, has made this uh, statement today in the papers. That he says, even if it's uh, it, if if we win the toss, we should bat. He says, even if it's a green wicket, even if it's a cloudy condition, uh, that we should bat. Now that he should have enough knowledge about uh, playing in England and giving his comments, and he said, Indian team has done reasonably well in England, going in playing in these uh, sort of uh, cloudy conditions and batting first. Uh, he's quite right there, and uh, and maybe. Uh, I think uh, it's you know what's happened is uh, apparently it's very very it's been very hot in Southampton, and it's been boiling as a matter of fact, and so I think the underneath is dry. It's expected to rain and wet conditions during the match, but then there are covers there, you know, and the covers are quite good. These people, so I don't think uh, uh, it will be a very wet sort of a moist uh, the dew type of a wicket. It will be something which will be pretty dry, and uh, I think we will need to bat first, definitely, because all your nerves and everything as well. Uh, it's better to take it out when you're when you have a good batting lineup, and if if they get a good uh, sort of a opening stand or any uh, you know any sort of a partnership, it puts extra pressure on 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 a on a side, and so batting is bat first, definitely. I think uh, if you look at the team, it clearly says that Virat Kohli wanted to bat first because he wanted to take the advantage on the fourth or fifth day with the two spinners with him. That's what the plan was. But it has started raining. Now we have to see if they're changing their plan or they're sticking to the previous plan. Uh, that's what I felt. It was very uh, evident that he wanted to uh, bat first with those two spinners. Doing the job in the fourth and fifth day. That's how it was planned. But now it's raining. We'll see how it is going to happen in like you no know, today and tomorrow. We don't know. Well, as, as far as we know, it's it's raining heavily. The game may get delayed. That's what they're saying. On the lines, switching to New Zealand. How? What do you think their strengths are against spin? You know that also, like Chum also said earlier, we look at who the opponents are. And all that. So, New Zealand, like, for example, a Kane Williamson is brilliant against spin. That we know. Whereas a Ross Taylor is just going to. Yeah, but 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 if you see but, the record, but if you see the record against uh, Ravi Ashwin and Ravindra Jadeja, he's not done that well. Uh, Ashwin has always yes. got the better of uh, Kane Williamson. He's dismissed him around five to six times. So it'll be a very good challenge. And uh, Jadeja, because he's so accurate, as uh, Ashwin, you know, uh, Anshuman sir said. That you know he doesn't need that much turn and bounce. Even on a flat wicket, he can keep things tight and build that pressure. And with that pressure, Ashwin picks up those wickets. So they are complementing each other. So I think it will be a challenge. And if you see the track record of New Zealand team against uh, subcontinent spinners, they have not been that great. Yes, sir. Um, Satish, I would ask. I'd, I'd like to ask Oja one thing. Is uh, in June sometimes like this wet conditions which prevail, the ball gets pretty wet, you know, because sometimes it drizzles and all that, and it gets wet. And then our spinners, uh, I remember during our time, uh, Anshu will uh, also uh, accept that, is that people couldn't grip the ball. You know, even people like Brishan uh, and Venkat, and they all had problem gripping the ball and trying to make it spin. Um, I don't know about this view, Paul. How it behaves, but uh, I think that is one thing which we have to be. Uh, how effective will these spinners be if something sir, like that happens? Uh, sir, I think I think this is where T20 cricket really. Hey, this uh, uh, T20 format, the the, yeah. the IPL that we play, uh, most of the games are played late in the night, and yeah. you play in dew day in day out. So you know when the ball. 
is not gripping what you need to do i think that is something which is an advantage when you talk about t20 cricket in getting it into test cricket so i think oh, those days unfortunately uh, most of the cricketers were not playing day and night games sir because they were not used to the due uh, the conditions then but yeah. now almost all cricketers are playing even in domestic cricket if you see sir few games are played under light so they are used to the conditions when the ball gets wet so i think uh, and these two guys if you talk about they have played fair bit of cricket with white ball when it's wet, when it's wet. so yeah. i don't think uh, that would be no, no, that much of point. a challenge yeah it's a very good point yeah the advantage of having this kind of a show sony you know the three of you can chat amongst yourself this is a brilliant question <laughs> and what a take i mean i i not realize that yes they are used to now yeah. uh, t20 cricket day night cricket more importantly so how to do the wet ball so brilliant that's a super answer for you like put like on your ipl will, hat i guess uh, yeah <laughs> anchu will, will tell you how much you have to change uh, you have to adapt your te- technique to face uh, bowlers in england that's what so i want to ask you sunny what did you yeah. you have told there you also i know you were roommates with few people there there's something no, no, you would no. have learned something you would have passed on so what can the you tell us about sunny. those the other <laughs> sunny yeah. yeah the fake sunny no he, uh, i was very fortunate to be his roommate because uh, he at that time i was not in the side i played only the last test match but all throughout he kept on telling me of as the changes that you have to make to bat in england and it was like play a play you know move your feet across first and play late and he would make me practice that in the room in front of the mirror uh, anshu i didn't tell you that because um, <laughs> that's it but every day he would make me do that and when i finally played i realized how important it was uh, because you know you were you had adapted to the conditions there because of the experience of your roommate uh, and sunil used to every morning tell me come on now do it about 100 times across and front across and back and keep your weight and he knew that he because he had experienced it and i got the advantage of it but those are the things those changes that you have to make uh, to play in england and you have to play very late out there because the ball tends to move off the wicket as well uh, anshu will be a better person to tell you because he opened and got quite a few centuries against quite a few counties at that time so how he adapted would be a, a great way for us to learn anshu and sunny was just mentioning that his roommate in england the other sunny told him you know practice against the mirror so it just as an opener i'll come i i want to add something here yeah. quite funny you told me come across and 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 play late you know uh, forward or back foot and sometimes play half cock because that was very important as well uh, i i don't know what sort of adaptation until you did uh, so we i think yeah connection i think could be he's having a uh, wifi problem as such uh, so that so those are the things in batting and that's why i'm a little worried about this present team uh, where batting is concerned they are all great stroke players i mean they're fantastic batsmen but uh, you know it's the first match in england uh, the trial matches are okay you know when you play against each other you're very familiar with that now you're under tension whether they have the patience the stroke players have the patience to be able to uh, to change their It's the way of thinking uh, i know pujara is there and uh, and rane both have done extremely well and we know their capability and we are backing a lot on them to sustain us through a long inning but uh, i mean if you have to win the test match you need the stroke players to get you the run and this is where i'm a little concerned about rohit sharma or gil or even kohli himself you know and 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 pant because they are all great players but uh, choosing the right ball to hit is a very important factor when it comes to england and playing in those conditions you have a formidable bowling lineup isn't it bolt is there wagner saudi it's not going to be easy different kind of bowlers one can bounce you out one can swing you out so that that challenge is going to be there with the new ball and later also correct and the other area 
that sorry let again uh, no 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 please say, please please no 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 the please other, go ahead other area which will decide uh, i think the test match which will actually decide the test match is going to be uh, the closing fielding in slip catching in england that is so important uh, slip catching and taking those half chances and the normal chances as well because uh, the ball can move just before it comes to your uh, in your hand you know in your fingers so you have to be very careful and you have to have a practice quite a bit in england to be able to master that and i think that's where uh, new zealand has done extremely well in those two test matches they played they, they caught everything in the slip and india will have to also do the same so i think that close in catching is going to be a very important factor uh, in england Jan, you were saying something? Ah, no, no. I was just, I was just adding that. I think uh, the, the the most important thing is that these three fast bowlers that we're talking about, New Zealand has. They don't have a, a spinner who can literally stop the Indian batting attack. But if you look at Indian bowling attack, the fast bowlers are good and the spinners are quite capable of doing that. So I think that's where. the difference will be yes we all agree that in new zealand has played two test matches in england they are used to it and the conditions are similar new zealand also we are about this team after losing most of their you know senior players and a uh, few cricketers who were not available they went on to beat australia in australia with a full australian side with that confidence i think this indian team is all about confidence that's what i have seen Uh, a rishabh pant the same rishabh pant who was struggling in ipl before the australian series everybody had written him off one innings then he is just a different batsman i think this is it is just matter of one session and things will change so i feel uh, we have a very good chance of uh, dominating new zealand yeah so i was just talking to sunny about this that batting in england i mean who who can lend more expertise than you guys uh, is there any particular changes you need to make like pragan was talking about spin bowling how do you adapt you know the ball as sunny said earlier will be doing things right through you know you can't really settle down as such so how do you adapt especially the new ball anshuman that's that's a tough part with a potent pace attack that new zealand have well to be very frank sadish i i can tell you that most difficult days to go on bat is england because the condition the wickets the ball does everything sometimes the bowler also doesn't know whether what he is doing you know suddenly this ball will you know move away in the air it will fall and come in the bowler also doesn't know so obviously the batsman also can't know so one has to be very very careful and you need to concentrate 110% not only that but you have to start nice and easy you look at one then two initially and then you you know get on with your strikes other thing which is most important is playing as late as possible in england play as late you have to know your off stump well leave as many balls as possible as many deliveries as possible outside the off stump frustrate the bowler let him try something new something different which he will give you a chance to score runs so you need patience you need that the quality determination to stay at the wicket as long as possible and grind it's not going to be easy like what you find in india or you know third, third world countries so it's bit of a struggle that you have to go through in england especially batting and the most important thing is using your feet the stand and deliver will not work in england unless it's absolute scorching summer where nothing is happening it is very rare that the ball doesn't seem it may not move but it would definitely seem and that's where you need to use your feet cut down on that swing cut down on that seam and you know that you can do only when you use feet now ajinkya rane for that matter virat kohli for that matter uh rohit sharma many times i've uh, seen him even to the pace bowlers using their feet using the trees Now that's very important. You just can't go six inches ahead of popping trees and six inches behind popping trees and try and play. You are allowing the ball to do everything. Now that's where the batting comes in. This is something different. 
than you know batting in India or Indian condition or similar condition or Australia. You need to get as close to the ball as possible to play and not at all play away from the body. Play very close to the body. These are the things which will make you carry on, make, make you grow uh, successful in those conditions. See, that's what I did. And Sunil did the same thing. And we used to talk, we used to chat. And the ball used to, in that time used to go. In uh, We once uh, told in April, May, which is, which is you know, cold or colder season, wet season, softer wickets. And I'm talking about 79, Sunny was there. Now, uh, you know, those conditions, you can't, you can't just push at the ball. You have to wait in a waiting game and let the ball come close to you. Let the ball come to you and not go to the ball. Now, these are small adjustments, but they'll have to do it. I mean, one has to do it. And like I said earlier, that there was nobody to tell us what to do. We had to do it ourselves by watching others. Now, if Rahani can do it, Virat can do it, the others can do it. If New Zealand batters can do it, the English batsmen can do it, watch. If the New Zealand bowlers can do it, why not Indian bowlers? Just watch they are, why, what they are doing. How successful they are. Why are they successful? What are they doing? That different. By watching, you learn. And you do the same thing. And you'll be pretty comfortable. I understand that. But the you know, just India, India just landed in they were in quarantine, you know, this this very thing. New Zealand have played two tests already in England against a formidable side like England, all that. So, how much of an advantage uh, do you think that will be? Uh, Sunny, I am asking you, how, I, will they be starting think, favorites because of that? Yeah, I, they're definitely the favorites, and I think they have a tremendous, they've organized their um, tour extremely well. Uh, whoever has done that for them. Uh, because, I mean, now they are familiar with the conditions. And conditions are very important. Not only just now we are talking about batting and fielding, but even bowling. Uh, I'm sure Pragyam will also be able to tell you is the length that you have to bowl. Even for a fast bowler or a spinner. Especially for a fast bowler or a steamer. You, you have to bowl much, much further up to be able to use the atmosphere and everything. See, what happens is, and that's when you need to get the right length and the right sort of a rhythm to get that length. See, it's easy to say that bowl up, bowl a little up, but you have to get that rhythm to bowl up as well. That rhythm has to be consistently there. And to uh, adjust to that is always going to be a problem uh, and, and a difficulty for somebody who is not, for a team that has not played a match. Uh, New Zealand has organized themselves. You know, they've bowled, their bowlers now know the length that they've been uh, effective. And, and, and practicing that length. Uh, and, and that's where I find India may, may have problems. Uh, they are, uh, it's, it's very easy to mentally say that we don't care about it, but it does make an effect. It, it's a major uh, blemish from our end, really blemish because of the IPL days. But what we could have done was we could have sent our guys a little earlier. Once the IPL was, uh, when, once it was canceled, they should have immediately organized to send the team there because you need time over that. And, and so they would have had many more matches, at least among themselves, before they came into a World Cup final of a test match. And I think that's where uh, India has faltered. And yes, it will be a disadvantage. And uh, New Zealand does have that, that bit of advantage, uh, for sure. Yeah, that, that actually leads me to, uh, I want to ask Pragya on this first and then Big consumer brains on this. But yeah, now the latest thing is that India, when they tour, they say we don't want to play first class matches because we don't get enough competition. So they play this intra squad, which is what they did yeah. now also. So when you were touring, did you did you find the same thing that you know people not offering it? earlier days when Sunny and Anshuman were touring, used to have proper, I mean, real contest. The first class team would play hard. They were all their professionals would play and everything. Now they release all their players, the rest players. So, what do you think of this idea of playing, you know, within squad rather than playing against opposition? Uh, right now, it for, it solves the purpose because you have specific kind of um, uh, practice or whatever you want to do. Because when you play, it is not like earlier. But now, when you go and play, you don't get similar kind of 
uh, matches that you used to get when anshuman sir or uh, sunny sir used to travel it has changed a lot now if you see the quality you don't get the same quality that is the only reason why indian team is insisting on playing matches amongst themselves than playing with the opponents uh, i think this solves the uh, you know the the issue that they want to address uh, to say that you know that's a very good point by anshuman sir what i was listening to is that the most important thing is cricket is played any sport is played mentally 90% and 10% physically uh and whatever i've seen uh, with this young guys what they do is they watch these games they try and study those lengths and reading the opponent and seeing them play i think that will give you a fair bit of uh, understanding what you need to do on certain conditions i think that's how they used to do earlier and that is how they need to do now but i also feel it is a very uh uh unfair advantage to new zealand when they were allowed to play two test match just before the uh, world test championship and i think that that is something which i should icc should look into that is something you know, should be there should be enough gap between the tournament you if you're playing a world cup a limited over world cup in some uh, country you don't go and play a bilateral uh, uh, tournament just before the series uh, tournament starts that is that is a undue advantage that's what i feel um, coming on this uh, satish um, i feel that one match uh, final is just not the correct way to go about it you should have had a three match uh, uh, at least three matches and the other is what is the point of having a league and point system because if it's a draw why should it be shared the team that did the better in the league should be the winner because they are ahead on the on on that basis so i mean where see what would have happened with this was then new zealand in, in whichever team is losing especially new zealand if they are on the defeating if they are being defeated they will try and play for a draw so that they can um, share the trophy but if the team that has done well in the league was there then the other team will try their best to try and beat them so there will be some uh it will be much more effective uh, and better for cricket as such and i think those are the areas i hope icc uh, looks at it in the future it has to be a three match series and the team that has got better points in the league should be uh, uh, the winner if if it's a draw so so that's i mean that's the why did they play all this league for just for both of them to be there and i think those are the changes which they should uh, look at yeah. and also i would like to echo my voice with uh, sunny sir is that if you see the teams that were playing the test championship the least matches that has been played by was new zealand if you see england has played the most uh, so you know it is bit unfair when you play less matches and you win games your percentage will go up but if you are playing 20 21 games and if you compare the similar stats england will always be behind new zealand so they, these are the things which we need to understand you know these are the things icc must look into uh, like how many matches are played and all the teams they have to uh, have played similar number of games not like there is a difference of 10 games uh, amongst each other that's what i felt i think this particular cycle the pandemic also had a part to play uh, and i think they already tweaking the rules for that but anshuman now your other hat the last hat with the bcc hat both sunny and pragyan have talked about how icc should not allow this bilateral series so first of all icc i know doesn't have a say in bilateral series but what pragyan means is the world cup and there's always a gap between playing the world cup and this so yes. what would what, what is your as an administrator what would be your take on this what would be your call but satish i think what sunny also said a lot of sense in it and what pragyan said also means a lot you know it's not it's not fair it's not fair that you give advantage to team a and disadvantage team b who are going to play such a big uh, match so you know this has to be looked into for sure or you have a you know best of three that would give fair chance to both the teams and like pragyan said that new zealand has played the least and they are in the final 
So, you know, this disparity has to has to be balanced. I'm sure ICT will be looking into it. And, you know, it is very similar. Satish, if you look at it, the ICC test ranking. You know, it is, according to me, it is, it is very convenient. If you're playing against Bangladesh, you're playing against Zimbabwe, and you beat them hollow, and you become number one. But if you, that year, you don't play, uh, you know, these teams, and you go and play Australia and New Zealand, or England, you're somewhere else. The story is something different. So this I, ICC ranking, everything, I think they need to look into it. And the number of matches being played by each team, each year. It, it is not that somebody is free, so they keep playing a lot more. And somebody is not free, you know, or they are busy playing the, some other tournaments like IPL or anything. There's other teams playing the four matches. Uh, that's that's something needs to be looked into. Well, let me also pick up on, on this issue. When you say best of three, uh, Sunny and Anshuman are like yeah. to weigh on this. How would you play best of three? Would you play three different venues in England? Would you play, uh, you know, home and away and then a third in a neutral? What what would you advocate? Because something will change. I'm sure the next cycle, as I said, they're already looking at the point system and all that. So, you know, if, if the ICA from our side, we give our opinion on this, it's something that ICC would probably look into. So, yeah. can you both weigh in no, on this as to what we can do? Yeah, it should be a neutral venue and they should play three like a series, one after another, you know, I mean, with enough time. Uh, that's the only way. Uh, a, they should make sure it's a neutral venue. That is uh, so that there is no advantage to anyone. And it has to be like a series, like what you have the basketball, you know, they play nine games or something uh, to decide who's the winner and all that. Same way over here, you have to play the three test matches. But remember, they should also consider the league points. That is what I'm saying. If it's a draw series or a draw, that league point is very important. Because, see, just now, India would have been going with an advantage as being the top of the league. You know, and New Zealand would have to fight to make sure they beat India in this series. It would not have been if they drew, then India would win. Uh, like what happens in a series uh, in, when we go abroad. If, they, if, uh, if a team doesn't win, then it share, it's not shared. It's the team which is there, which have been the winner, will remain as winners. Yeah, the trophy, yeah. So, yeah, so keep the trophy. So, uh, I think it's, it should be three matches at a, at a neutral venue. I don't know what the other panelists think about that. I think it's a fair point, sir. It's uh, when, when, you're, when you're trying to promote test cricket and make sure that, you know, the, uh, everybody... Uh, is again coming back to watching the test cricket and it is one of the biggest events uh, the it will be fair enough to have three matches uh, in a neutral venue and then uh, the best team wins I, that's what i was i mean i reiterate what i said earlier uh maybe you can obviously you will have your point i'm saying why not have the money is not an issue today i know logistics is a problem but why not have one test in this case in New Zealand, one test in India. If it's somebody wins two all, series is over. The third one, you go to a neutral place. Is that too much of logistics? Uh, in this pandemic, yeah, I agree, it would not have been possible. But for the future, can we think of that? But to play this one game... <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Log okay. Yeah, go ahead. Lo so logistically, I feel it will be a very big challenge because when you're traveling to New Zealand, you need at least a week's time to get used to the conditions because you have to give a fair chance to your team members. You cannot be going there and just being there, just yeah. land and in two days time you play a game. Then again, traveling back to India and playing another game. So it's a process of say 15, 20 days for just two test match. So I think uh, that is something which will be a very big challenge. Yeah, I agree with it again. Now, why do you need home in away? Meaning, again, you know, you'll be one all. That's for sure, because they will have their own conditions favorable to their bowlers, batters, whatever. Similarly, India will have uh, their advantage of preparing wickets according to their requirements. And then you ultimately land up with one test. Match. What is happening now? True. The best True, thing sir. is what Pragyan says, besides the logistic, uh, I think the best thing is to play at neutral venues and 
done with it. Just thinking loud. How about, you know, Sunny, you mentioned the team which finishes top of the table needs to be given an advantage. Why not say if you finish the top of the table, you can host the test. You can host the final. Is that no, too radical will, also? Yeah, no, then it will be an advantage like maybe in India, then we will have a spinning wicket and everyone will say, look, it's unfair. So I think the neutral venue is very important uh, to to keep that uh, sanctity, you know, the, of the of the of the test series, yeah, basically, so if you have to be a champion. You have to be a champion in the in a neutral condition. I think uh, that would be much more effective and much more uh, sort of uh, uh, accepted. Hey, Pragam. Yeah, uh, I think it's it's a good idea because when you are talking about you, you can get an advantage if you be the topper then I think everybody will have a good competition throughout the tournament. Like all the teams will be fighting to be number one and number two, the way it happens in IPL. Like if you be number one and number two, you have advantage of playing one more game to qualify, even if you lose the first one. So that is something really nice. Yes, that is something can also excite teams. So that, you know, if you be the number one team, you can play in your home conditions. Gentlemen, uh, it's time actually to take some questions uh, as and when they come in. But it's been an absolute uh, pleasure to talk to you guys. So I will direct the questions as they come in. Uh, obviously, it, it's, this is not the first last show. We'll continue to have this kind of shows. In the meantime, uh, let's go in for some questions. Uh, Ankita will take us towards that. <laughs> 